Mark chapter number four. Interesting, great chapter. And he began again to teach by the seaside. He's along the shore, beach. Great places where he, you know, people say <clears throat> it belongs in church. If a Christian comes up to you and says, well, I know Jesus, I'm a Christian, and this is not the place. You know they haven't read their Bible. Or just tell them, say, hey, let's go down to the let's go down to the Daytona Beach and we'll preach there. Oh, what are you talking about? That's where Jesus preached. It's remarkable. And there was gathered unto him great multitude. So that he entered into a ship and sat in the sea on the ship, didn't sit in the water. Good up too. And the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. So his pulpit, get this, is in a ship and he's sitting. He's got his mouth close to the water. He's got, and I guarantee he doesn't have a glass bowl. And he taught them, taught them many things by parables and said unto them, in his doctrine which is taught. Doctrine is what is taught. Here we go. Great thing. Hearken. Listen to me. Behold, there went out a sower to sow. And came to pass as he sowed. Some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it. Some fell on stony ground, where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up, because it had no death of earth. When the sun was up, it was scorched, because it had no root, it withered away. Some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and yielded no fruit. And other fell on good ground, and did yield fruit, that sprang up and increased, and brought forth some thirty, some sixty, and some a hundred. He said to him, He that has ears to hear, let him hear. Implying that, you know, if you got ears, doesn't mean that you're going to listen. You've got to put, how can I say it? you got to put effort to hear something. Like, I'm going through training now. i got to hear and not open my mouth when you open your mouth you're not listening and when he was alone they that were about him with the twelve so there's other besides disciples as of the parable and he said unto him unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God here's the mysteries but unto them that are without all these things are done in parable so there's some that came with the disciples saying um, Jesus, we want to know what that meant. Can you explain it to us? He said, you know what? You're going to get the answers from God because you're asking, you're seeking, and you're knocking. That seeing that they may see and not perceive. Well, that's not normal. That's not natural. And hearing that they may hear and not understand. So you see what the understanding is, the Bible definition? Understanding comes by listening. So a Jabba jaw, I'm trying to think of how Solomon puts it in Proverbs. Um, someone that talks a lot, just talks, talks. I can't think what he calls that person. No, it, it, it's a particular word. I can't think what it is. But if you know someone who's always speaking, always talking, always got he, he's lacking understanding. He's a, he's a fool. At least at any time they should be converted. So, these people are blinded, deafed, if you can say that word, so they don't get converted. So they won't be in heaven because they don't want it. In heaven, there will be people who will want the truth, want the doctrine, want Jesus Christ, and stressing in the word. No one's going to go to heaven that does not want the word. When you go out and sow the seed like this guy is, and we're going to understand the parable, man, they don't want that seed. Why would they want to go to heaven? Why would you want them in heaven? Would you want somebody in glory praising Jesus Christ and they are not? I wouldn't. And their sin should be forgiven them. So if you're not listening, you're not perceiving, you're not hearing, you're not going to get saved. 
that ends all the people that say, oh, everybody will be saved in the end. And he said unto them, know ye not this parable? How then will you know all parables? Ooh, kind of cruel. The sower soweth the word. Let's get this. I'm a sower. You put gospel tracts out, you're a sower. You go knocking on doors, you're a sower. Do you open the Bible? Open the Bible and show people scriptures. You're a sower. I didn't say turn the radio on. I didn't say turn on this TV and here's a CD or a video. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word. Sanctify it through thy word. Thy word is true. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing. The in these things are they by the wayside. Okay, that matches verse four. Where the word is sown. The word again. But when they have heard Satan. Go back down to verse four and fowls birds in the bible have a parallel equal to satan and i used to have birds and all that when i learned that i, I got rid of birds it says in the book of ecclesiastes that a bird will go tell the king in his chambers there's something bad about birds you gotta be careful Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. No salvation. So, number one, if you witness with the word and try to tell people about Jesus, number one, Satan is there amongst you. You'll be looking at people. You'll be staring at people. You will see people. You will do the word, preach it, read it, however you do it. And for some, Satan is going to come along and just grab that word right from them. That'd be like going out and putting corn in, in a little plot of land. And somebody went and stole all the, all the corn you put out. You ain't going to get no corn. Absolutely not next number two and these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground that's verse number five who when they have heard the word it's all about the word the the seed is called the word immediately receive it with gladness now, there's going to be some people you're going to deal with, and I've seen this a lot in the jailhouse. Oh, yeah, okay, wow, yeah. And have no root in themselves. They're not secure about them on themselves. They're not secure what they've done. And so endure, but for a time. So they're there, they're doing what they're supposed to be doing, maybe reading the Bible, but there they are. When affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, family, job, someone mocked them, someone made fun of them, immediately they are offended. That's a big word today, offended. So here are people, and they're not saying they're not, they lost it. You know, they got saved. They're, they're on fire, but something put their flame out. They quit serving God and they become unfruitful. So there'll be some people that will get saved under whatever ministry you got, and they're going to fall away. That's what the Bible says. Number three, and these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word. And the cares of the world and the deceitful of richness riches and the lust of other things entering in choketh the word hindereth growth retard growth 
they get saved. But overtime on Sunday is more important. I need money. Uh, child's baseball game, midweek service. Can't go, gotta go to the baseball game. Daughter's got to wear shorts or up her caboose for a dance class. Fishing is more important than God. The, the lust, the, the, the riches, the cares choke and produce no fruit. And you're going to see people like that. There are four results. Of ministering the word you've got Satan after your tail and that's gonna be the most biggest one that's why it's the first one you'll have people get saved and because of the persecution they'll fall away seen that I'm sorry I've seen that one and then you see people who will get saved and just everything else but Jesus I've seen that one and these are they which are sown on good ground I don't know if I've seen this one for someone's gotten saved by with my help such as bear the word our bear no that's not the bear and receive it and bring forth fruit some 30 fold some 60 some and 100 God never told you to bring forth 100% he said you know what 30 he said 60 to some 100 You go out and tell people, go you know the world and preach the gospel. You give your tithes and offering to the church that goes out and does things to witness and supports missionaries. And you find at least one missionary support, you're going to get fruit by your labors. People will look at, well, your ministry at the farmer's market, you know, no one's ever gotten saved. I don't know. They haven't come to me, yeah, but I don't know what happened. I don't know if somebody ended up in the hospital or in the deathbed saying, you know what, well, what did that guy say? Well, tell me. I don't know. I know we had we had one time we had four girls come to us, Christians, down at the, the beach area, and they were just all excited what we did. I remember Satan threw some guy cussing, firing, all that, and man, it just shocked them. I don't know what happened when they went back home. Maybe they're serving the Lord. You don't know. But that's witnessing. That's the ministry that God's given you, the fourfold. And he said unto them, Is a candle brought to be put under a bushel? Now you look at that word bushel, it says measurement. Doesn't say basket, doesn't say bush. So I don't understand that one. Or under a bed. Well, I don't understand under a bed if you want a hot, fiery sheets. I know, I know a bedpan, but that bedpan is not a flame. And not to be set on a candlestick. Yeah, that's what you do with a candle. You put it so the light can be seen. The other two, you're hiding the light. That's stupid. You're wasting a candle. Honey, where's that candle that we have here? It's lit. Where is it? It's under the pan. First of all, you know what? If you put it on something like that, it's not going to burn very long. The oxygen burns out. If you put it under your bed, your whole house is on fire. I don't know about the bushel I said, but if you look it up, it says measurement. For there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested. You may have skeletons in your closet now, but Jesus Christ at the great white throne judgment or at the judgment seat of Christ, he'll open that door and let them all out. You may have in a secret affair, but that secret will be revealed at either judgment. Your pastor don't know, your church don't know, your mother don't know, your father don't know, your spouse don't know, your boss don't know. One day they will know unless you put it under the blood and repent and get right. Neither was anything kept secret, but that it should come abroad. That's what a candle is. Make known. You know, if you get up in the middle of the night, you got to use the bathroom, you light that, that candle. You want that candle to show you that table you're just about to kick. 
or that that thing that's at your knee level that's going to give you a bruise in the morning. It wants to lead you to right where you're going. That's why they put a light in the refrigerator so when you open it in the middle of the night, you can find what you're looking for. That light turns off when you close the door, I hope. Never figured that out yet. It's an eight years old. Can I? I do think there's a guy living in there. A lot of food disappears. For there is nothing hid which shall not be manifest, neither was anything kept secret, but that it shall come abroad. you got to get to know that verse. Saved or lost, because Jesus Christ will reveal what's ever not under the blood. How's that one? You got a lie? You got a secret? If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. Listen to me, people. Get that secret under the blood of Jesus Christ. And if somebody needs to know, that's repentance. 1 John 1 9. If you got a secret, uh, you got a secret against your spouse, you better let her, him or her know. And you better put it under the blood. Now, if you got a gift or something like that, you're going to surprise them. All right, don't you know? Don't tell them early. Honey, I got you this gift for your anniversary. And preacher Stiley said, "I need to tell you right now." And just don't send me no emails. You know what I'm talking about. Any, any, I'm telling you right now, secret birthday parties and all that. As far as I can say, when we're talking about that, I don't think that's biblical. He just said, anything kept secret. And he said unto them, take heed what you hear. Uh-oh. We're talking about ears again. Seems like the standard in this chapter. And what measure you meet, that's measure, rule, or standard. This is judge not, least ye be judged in Mark. Notice how Mark does not say judge not, least ye be judged. He quotes the, the second verse. It shall be measured unto you, unto you that here shall more be giving, given. So if you treat somebody with grace and mercy, God will return the favor to you. If you're harsh, God will be harsh for you. If you're judgmental, God will be judgmental. If you don't listen to the cause and just jump to conclusions, God will jump to conclusion. Judge, not least you be judged. And he said, so is the kingdom of God. Is that made the kingdom of God? Because when we read yesterday, chapter 3, verse 23 and 24, there's a kingdom of Satan. I forgot to mention that. Satan has a kingdom. He's a king over the children of pride. Ezekiel or one of those prophets say. You know, you know what Satan's kingdom is right now? It's hell. Great place not to be. A king, kingdom of God is that as if a man should cast seed into the ground. And that's kind of interesting, kingdom of God, because usually that's a spiritual kingdom. Heaven would be the physical kingdom and here he's referencing the kingdom of God as seed and ground and I've always been taught that God is spiritual and the kingdom of heaven is is physical here the kingdom of God is physical seed ground dirt tomatoes I knew I was gonna say that and soon slip sleep and should sleep and rise night and day and the seed should spring and grow up. And he knows not how. And there are scientists, you know, you teach your children in a grade book, this is the seed in the embryo stage, and blah, blah, blah. You don't know that. Let me ask you a question. We're talking about seed here. An evolution question. You put the seed in the dirt, right? There's no light in the dirt, right? How does that seed know which way is up? How many seeds are planting themselves down towards hell and not up? And don't say gravity because you can't explain gravity. And I would assume there's no gravity when you're buried under dirt. Put a bulb upside down. Put a bulb upside it won't grow. And God just told you. You don't know how. Listen. I don't want to discourage you out of learning science in school. and play. God just told you. You don't know how it does it. Wouldn't it be great if God had, all right, 
we're going to have an elementary school one through six in eternity for a while. I'm going to teach you what men said it is. I'm going to show you my what I what what I said it is. You know, explain the creation when God made the trees and the and He said, "Let there be trees and grass and herd." Boom. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself. Try that with science. Science brings up chemicals. First the blade. Okay, you can learn that in school. Then the ear. Yep. Yeah. After that, the full corn in the ear. I wonder if that matches the science books about grain. The parts of the plant with the grain. I never checked that. He says there's the blade, the ear, and the full corn. Somebody can check that. But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he putteth in the sickle, because the harvest is come. All right, so you know what he's saying? He plants the, the seed in the ground. You got the blade, blah, blah. But you know what he cares about? That moment when it's ripe, it's time to pick. I don't care what it does. Okay, I'm not care about watering it no more. I don't need the weed no more. It's now time to pick. How's that? And he said, Whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God? So we see Mark is more on the kingdom of God, the spiritual kingdom. Or with what comparison shall we compare it? What is the kingdom of God like? Well, that's... It's like a grain of mustard seed. Another physical thing. Which, when it is sown in the earth, it's likened again to a plant. This whole chapter is about farming and, I don't think husbandry, and greenhouse and plants. Like a grain of mustard seed, which when it is sown in the earth, is less than all the seeds that be in the earth. It's the smallest seed of all. But when it is sown, it groweth up and becomes greater than all the herbs. Mustard's a herb. And shooteth out great branches so that the fowls earlier, Satan, the devils of the air may lodge under the shadow, darkness, shadow of it. And with many such parables spank he the word unto them as they were able to hear it. Don't you see what, what this chapter is doing? Listen up. And I'm saying some things that people will not purposely get. And the greatest thing that you can rely on this what it's being said. You ever been out of town and you don't know where you're going and you go and ask somebody for directions and they tell you how to get there and you just like, oh. And you find yourself even lost this, lost her. You may pass that same location four or five times. But without a parable, spank he not unto them. And when they were alone, he expounded all things to his disciples. So all this that Jesus spoke. Later on, he told his disciples, this is what the parable is. And we're not told. We're just told the parable. And the same day, you remember, he's out in the boat. Actually, no, it's in over here. To eat. When he was alone, verse 10, they that were, okay, so he's not in the boat. And the same day, when the even was come, 6 p.m., he says unto them, Let us pass, let us pass over. Let us pass over. Let us pass over. Let us pass over. Unto the other side. Let us pass over unto the other side. Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, bye guys, see you later, bye, nice seeing you, have a good day, bye. They took him even as he was in the ship. So he's still in the ship. He 
He's out in the water. So when they came to ask Jesus, what did I say, verse 10? And when he was alone, they were about him with the 12, asked him of the parable. It says here, when he was in the ship, did they wait out to say, hey, here they come walking out in the water, Jesus? What did that mean? I don't know. This, I don't know. But he's in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. Are they all sitting in little boats here talking to Jesus? And just trying to think. I've got little notes here. And there rose a great storm of wind. And the waves beat, beat into the ship. So that it was now full. It's over the watermark. It's in the ship. You can have water outside your ship, but when you got water in the ship, you're in trouble. And when your ship is full of water, I don't know what they call that. You got a piece of wood in around as you're sinking. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. Now, some people say, you know, don't say Jesus fell asleep in the storm. Kind of, I don't believe in, you know, I don't know what you forget what you call it, but, you know, he did fall asleep and the storm did come. And they awakened him and said unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? They're not confidence. Jesus, you don't care. Now let's go back to what Jesus said. Let us pass over onto the other side. They didn't listen. And neither do we. Do we? I get like the disciples and storm. Lord, you don't care. Lord, you get me. Are you asleep, God? God never sleeps. And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea. You know, the, the, you know what's weird? The prophets of the Old Testament were told to preach to mountains, preach to trees. Ezekiel preached to a valley of dry bones. He, he walks up to the sea and says, peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. Now, the wind, the storm, and everything of this sea obeyed God, right? But when Jesus said, let us pass over the other side, man did not believe in him. Isn't man a great character? Isn't he just so great? I mean, you think about it. Let's try to bring this up to date. You get in the car. You tell your family, we're going to the grocery store. All right, you get in the car, you go down there, and you just make a right hand turn or a left hand turn that you don't usually make. Now, whole thing, oh, we, we're not gonna go to, we're, oh, come on, we're, we're, this is not the way to the grocery store. Calm down, there's an accident up ahead, we're just gonna take a little detour, but we're going to the grocery store. But when God says it, and something happens in our life that, you know, a storm or a detour, we get all panicky. That's not right. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? Hmm? Didn't I tell you where we were going to go? So what would Jesus do if he was amongst the church? Man, he'd ball us out, wouldn't he? I know some churches right now that's going on this time of period, what, what's going on in church. I guarantee you walk in those churches, he'll start kicking over displays and, and all, all kinds of ruckus in the name of play and children. And he'll tell you that's wrong. I don't approve of that. I guarantee. You don't like that? You don't like what I say? That's absolutely tough. But I believe that with Bible. And they feared exceedingly and said one to another. I wonder they said this out loud. What manner of man is this? 
that even the wind and the sea obey him. Wait a minute. Guys, didn't you just see a withered hand get popped out healed? Didn't you just see a leprous man get healed? Didn't you just see your mother-in-law get up and start ministry? You and, and you're just amazed because a storm went away? You remember when we read he fed the 5,000 and they took up 12 baskets of each and it came time to another multitude, 4,000, and they didn't remember. You know what we forget? You know what the disciples forget that we forget? We forget to memorialize Jesus and what he's done in our lives. You need to take your prayer book or your Bible. You need to put down your prayers and write down on date God answered. You need to count your blessings and name them one by one. And remember, every time, every year, hey, Jesus got me through that. And I'll help you through the next storm. And then we'll just go to one verse of the next chapter. And they came over onto the other side, just as Jesus said. Maybe I can lose it. Maybe I'll never leave the earth for safety. It's coming a day I'm going to blow that trump and you're all going to come home. I made a rapture. Now. It's been so many years of rapture. Oh, maybe it's not going to. It's there. It's going to happen. Jesus told us it's going to happen. Believe him. That is faith. And when he tells us about the judgment seat of Christ for Christians, don't think that he delays his coming. You can go do what you want to do. Even in this, this chapter here, we learn about secrets. Don't keep secrets. Put them under the blood. Keep serving. Keep going. Get that can. I remember when, we, I, when I grew up with boats and all that. You get that can, you bail the water out. Just, And then when you really get deep in the war and say, Jesus, help. 